What's up guys, welcome to new Unreal Engine 5 tutorial, today we are continuing with the RP series and the advanced AI. So today we'll be setting up the attack combo system for the AI. So in the last episode we made that when he reaches uh, our destination, it will start to attack us, but we just place a random attack uh, animation that we had uh, repeatedly because it was just temporary. But today, let's go ahead and make it more dynamic by adding his combo system, just like we did with the player. This is going to be a very easy bit to follow, so let's get started. Alright, so the first thing that we're going to do is go ahead and go into blueprints and open up the attack system from the player. And yes, you guessed it, we're going to be actually just going ahead and reusing our existing combo system that we made for our player. So let's go ahead and now also open up the in the AI folder, the um, BP AI. So basically the blueprint for AI. Don't mistake this again with the AI controller. It is the blueprint actually itself, the one that has dimension, all this stuff. So let's go ahead and go a bit down and basically we're gonna paste our of a code here. So yeah, we're gonna literally go ahead and copy and paste. Why will we do this again if it's exactly what we need, right? So let's go ahead and you select all of the combo system as you can see. So basically the attack input, the sword attack with the switch of here, the combo continuum, the stop combo and attack and then all of the different attacks. Okay. So for now, we are not going to be uh, copying the sword traits or the uh, sphere traits uh, and the sounds. For now, it's going to be just the core of the animations and the system. So with that said, we can just Ctrl C and if we go into our BPI, we can just go into a random space in our event graph and just go ahead and Ctrl V and then you will, have, you will get basically this pop-up where it will ask uh, basically what you want to do with the custom events. And basically we can say do nothing in all of them and you say confirm. And now if we get closer, there it is. Now you will see that indeed we have some errors over here and basically this is just a Thing of copying and pasting with other blueprints with and the calls from the custom events it's just a bit of what it is but basically you just have to remove this and then just call again the attack uh, one event for example so we'll be here and do the same with the rest of ones so here it will be attack two and then with the other one it's like basically the the call basically just breaks and you have to kind of uh, add the node again it's, uh, it's what we had to do basically attack Four, and that's it. There we go. So now we have a calls there, and then here is the sword attack. If I know how to type correctly, <laughs> there you go. Sword attack, not the combo. Okay, don't mistake this. Has to be exactly the one that was before. In the can attack, you can see it's like empty. This is because the variable has not been created. So right click, say create variable, and then let's compile and select can attack and make this true by default. Okay, because we need to be able to well the ai enemy has to be able to attack from the start so make sure you take that and then in save attack again right click create attack um, and then in here create variable once again if we compile you'll see again it's updating everything is resolved in stop combo again here stop combo put it here it's basically just uh, copying everything from here and integrating it into our uh, ai blueprint Again, in the attack index created, and then with that, you will see some errors in the meshes. We can just go and get our uh, normal mesh okay, from our AI. Let's put it here. You can just basically put it over, not in the text, but right in the like in the box where it doesn't kind of highlight, and then you can just drag it and it will replace it. And with that, I should be able to compile, and we should not have any errors. There we go. Great, Pre uh, created. So in the can attack variable, make sure that it is on. This is very important. And then with the other ones, you can just leave them uh, by default, just disabled, and the attack in this zero. Okay. But make sure that the can attack is true. Very important, uh, because if not, it will not attack. <laughs> it will be like it's broken. What is happening? And it will take like, two hours to find the issue. And it's just it didn't check this. So make sure that's on. All right. So now of course we have to use this. So I'm gonna uh, get rid of this input because I mean the AI will not be controlled by us. It will be controlled by yourself, by the behavior tree. So let's make a new custom event. And this will be the um, sword attack and um, combo. And let's just make it call from behavior trees from BT. Okay. It's a long name, but it will just make sure that it's distinct from the other ones because we have already like sword attack, sword attack combo. And I just don't want to confuse. So it's going to be clear that it is the one that we're going to call. So now we have to go into our interface 
the attack interface that we did in the last episode and now we can just delete this because we are not going to use it anymore and we can just go ahead do this and then say the uh, sword attack combo call from bt it's faster here now of course right now we will not have the animation duration don't worry we can just put four, uh, 0.4 for now and you'll see that that value will work pretty nicely as a delay between the animations uh, you can play with the setting uh, later on but yeah uh okay so that's pretty much what we need but now you will see that if we press play and um, he will come he will attack with the combo system but he will stop the reason is that we have to still set up some things in the um i mean notify so as you know our system from the uh, player for the combo system works with a name notifies okay you will, if you don't remember we'll just revise it in a second but basically this event is being called and it's very important so let's go into one of the attack montages it's press in the browse uh, button here and it will take us into the animation in the content browser and we just need to open up the sword combo next a name notify um basically let me use uh, recover walls the name notify just in case you don't remember basically we are just adding this uh, kind of event over here where the animation gets into here it will call whatever is in here and execute it and basically that's what we're doing but you can see that we have a different thing over here and it's that before we we're using the third person character well now we have to also do it for ai so let's go ahead and do so so what we can do is do it in the cast field because that will mean that it is not uh, the third person character i'm going to just do cast to bp underscore ai make sure it is bp underscore ai not the animation blueprint something like that remember to plug in the get owner here we can just double click to make the road a bit nicer and then we just need to get this and do the sword attack combo okay remember it has to be the sword attack combo exactly like this one and just put this over here in the return node and that should be great now we can just compile and save and now if we press play you can see that now it should do all the combo successfully it will do this do this and do that and uh, now it did launch me in the air we'll fix the collisions in a second but you get the idea everything is uh, going ahead and working now we do have to make it in one more place so uh, just close this go back here and we need to do it with the combo end so in here we just need the reset notify and then again exactly the same in the cast we just need to cast now to the cast fail sorry we have to cast to the and bp ai so again remember it's not the abp ai don't make that mistake it is the bp ai the blueprint stuff again get toner here we can just double click to reroute it so it's a bit nicer and then again this will be the oh, in, instead of the uh attack combo this will be the stop combo because of course this is the stop um combo and in notify compile and save and that should be it so now we can close this and uh everything should be fine so it will attack us okay yeah let's you can see it's doing the combo there um let's go ahead and actually go and um you know fix the issue that we're having which is the uh the basically collisions right so let's go into the ai and if we go into the mesh over here you'll see that we have a few properties um basically you see you see that this is set by uh physics body and this is basically uh, and the collision enabled by querying physics basically this was set up originally for the ragdoll but right now we actually don't really um need that so what we can do well of course it's not ragdolling so what we can do is change the collision enabled to be um query only no uh no physics collision and you will see well if that should be fixed as you can see okay no <laughs> okay sorry about that um just put directly no collision okay it will still collide with us with the capsule component but it will not launch us in the air uh, you can see it's exactly what we want but of course when we die we have to remember to check it into query and physics so just go into the event graph and we're gonna go into the uh where he dies so in the event any damage you're seeing here that uh where's the where's the where's the, yeah he plays all that and then we decrease health and if it's dead the player will do all this stuff but first of all before setting the simulate physics which is the ragdoll uh, we're gonna put it back so I just get the mesh and set collision uh was said object that response to all channels maybe it was no sorry about that no it wasn't uh, set collision object type and we can just set it back to physics body and that should uh kind of fix it because it should override it um so actually we can put it even just in normal power all right uh it's gonna quickly check there's another for another one set object type 
let's see if there was no okay no so that, that should be fine i mean let's go ahead and quickly test it so what we can do is go into the uh his health component and put the current health and um, to be like two and with that <laughs> he should go ahead and uh if i hit him he should die okay yes okay so we got some errors because we did not fully integrate the um health system into him uh so don't worry we'll, we'll check that later on but uh, but it should be fine okay so don't worry about that yet uh but it should be resolved okay uh so okay so of course now it can attack us now let's quickly go ahead and give him a sword because it makes more sense right so let's go ahead and add him a static mesh there we go and this will be his sword and make sure it is child of the mesh itself of course and then this has to be the sword um, model that we have and of course we have the socket that we created which is the hand our sword and then it will be perfectly placed there and make sure that the collision is set to no collision because we don't want to have collisions with our sword uh, now you go here you can see he is attacking with our sword and everything is working great and uh, he's doing the combo right uh, and then of course when he stops with the combo he will okay <laughs> you can see that he has a problem and he is going ahead and continuing to attack constantly so you're probably wondering why is this happening why is he staying on a loop and as you can see if we pay attention the uh, prints that we have for the our servers to calculate the distance have stopped working and the reason is that well let's go into our ai behavior tree real quick so we have the servers here going on right and we have this uh, print on here right at the end so we can see the distance and you can see that right now when we start chasing you can see the prints are appearing but as soon as kind of i book him out and kind of go and then uh go apart he, the prints will stop working but he is stuck on this so what is happening and this is also an error that a lot of you were happen uh well having in the last episode where we actually set up the service and stuff and the attack right um so what is happening is if we go inside of the service is that well i basically made the mistake of making this an event receive activation ai and the thing is that this will only trigger like once every time it's activated and so on but actually this is not what we want we want always to be calculating the distance so what we need to do is to use an event tick so we can go up here into the functions go into override and then go into the receive tick ai and with that we can do exactly the same but all the time which is what we want so we just get this and put it into the cast actor node and then get the controlled pawn and put it into the target node and then we can go ahead and delete this one because now we don't need it and we can just put our tick ai there so make sure that the control pawn is connected to the target here and the other actor into there uh, okay so with that you will see that now this is fixed so if i press play he will start to attack me in the combo stuff and once i go he will stop and then go back to go ahead and uh, chase me so basically everything is right now fixed and you can see that the prince will always be happening uh, whenever he's in the chase mode and of course if i distract him i'm gonna go back he will go back into his patrolling and the prince will stop and he will continue and then of course his system again will continue so basically that is now fixed that was the error that we were having sorry about that uh, so you guys uh some of you guys comment me through discord that basically uh, your ai kept attacking so this was the problem and 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 there we go um so now you can see we have this working he can attack so let's go ahead and quickly set up the traces so can, he can basically do some damage to us and that will basically conclude this episode and we can move on into some things later on in the episode as well in the next episode so this will be the last thing we will do today uh so let's quickly go into the vp ai we can close this both things we can go into the van graph and actually uh yeah we can leave that there and the van graph and we will need to do exactly what we did with our player character for the line traces right so again what we can do you just go into the blueprints and you will see that we have the sphere trace and sword trace and actually what we want to do is remove his kick because honestly i do think that it doesn't really match in his ai uh, kind of system let me put this in the middle so you can see a bit better um i don't think it really fits in uh, maybe in the future we can make it better but his kick is not what i really want and uh, the kick is attack three so what i can do is go in here 
and just get really attack three out i guess so and then just plug in directly attack four and then just go and put uh here just where is it, where is it? remove pin any three and that's it and now he will only go ahead and execute three attacks without the kick so you can see like this and like this and then he will continue doing so as always or go back i just found it a bit dy dynamic of course you can add it back it will still be here but we are not using so let me just put a comment here not using at the moment so we can have a little note let's put it this enter in between parentheses and um it just because the thing is that the kick is very unique and we need this fear trace and so on and just yeah no <laughs> we're gonna make it a bit more dynamic all right so now once again uh we will need the sword trace uh well basically you use the notify so again let's go ahead and open this go into the notify begin and in the cast fail we'll do the same that we did with the um combo start and begin we'll do it with the cast to um bp underscore ai again make sure it's the bp not the abb it's the bp ai connect this into the owner we can double click to reroute it put it here and then do the star sort trace now of course we have not created the star sort trace in the bp ai so let's go ahead and do so uh, so open up the uh, player stats uh, component sorry now the player stats the attack system and as we did with the other thing of this well now we need to copy this <laughs> basically right and i believe that we need to copy also the play sound so basically just get all this and just copy again why would we do this again if we have it already and it's exactly what we need right it's logic and again here this will just confirm this put this down here and then the only thing that we have to do is go here delete this and then say play sword hit sounds and then plug it again and we will not have any errors with there now we do need to plug in the um, uh, the sword top point and the bottom point so what we can do is just open up our third person character and copy its exact points because this they're beautifully set up so you can see them here so we can just go ahead and copy the top point and bottom point so if we copy both select both ctrl c go into the ai and then in uh, in the sword ctrl v put them inside now the thing is that the basically the transformation was broken so we can go for example select the top point go into the third person character select the top point and we can just go into the location right click copy and go in here and then right click and paste that's in the right location and actually we don't need the rotation so we can just go directly into the bottom point bottom point location copy and paste in the other one i basically made it so it also has a a bit full did I not paste it? Oh, sorry, it's in the <laughs> it's in the location. I did it because it looks a bit nicer, but it doesn't matter, okay? The rotation doesn't matter, it's just the location. So there we go, now we have our points. We can close our third person character and also our attack system thing. Go back here and then we can just delete this, delete this, and if we compile, this should be, oh, okay. So we just need to drag it here, and basically like this and put it here. Okay, this is what we have to do, but it's okay. Basically, we're just substituting the old uh, points from our player to our AI. So now we compile. Uh, we still have some things here. So just right click over here, create the variable. And then if we compile again, that's it. Okay, so that was what we needed. So now we can just go back here and do the start sort trace. And of course, make sure that if you're doing the start sort trace, connect this back to the return node and then also it was in the begin right because it's the start trace and now let me just copy this to notes and let's go into the end now let's do exactly the same paste it go into the field here put the uh, owner here and in this case it will be instead the stop sword trace okay and again let's connect it to return node here compile and save and that actually should work so let me just put this into b for duration so we can preview the sphere trace coming on and the sounds and everything should work so if we go here here we'll be doing the trace as you can see great so everything is working as you can see and yet yeah, we will also need the sphere trace on this tab as you can see there we go it needs the sphere trace also so let's quickly do that um i know that i said that we would not need it if we had the kick but i forget that the tab does use 
uh, use it basically. So uh, we can cause the sword trace notify and open instead the sphere trace notify. And we can just go and open up the attack system and go and copy the sphere trace staff or kick. Right, copy this. We're gonna close it. Uh, go back to the AI and just go here and paste it as with with it with the other one. And now we have to do the uh, sphere trace right point. So actually, let me uh, open the third person character again. <laughs> Sorry about that. And then we can just copy the what is it? The sphere trace, which is here. Copy and go here into the AI. Just paste it, and it will be in the exact position. Great. And we can just get the one out. Uh, oh, it's already had that. Okay, so sphere trace pause. And let's go to Ventic, and then just replace it here, put it here, and put it here. I know that I'm doing the steps a bit quicker, but I need to get through this. But it's basically just replacing some stuff, right? I can now just close the third person character and go back into the notify of the sphere trace. And again, like with the with the other one in the cast field, need to cast to the BP AI. Again, not the ABP, see it's the blueprint itself, because that's a typical mistake that a lot of people do. And then let's go ahead and plug that in. And then the this will be the sphere trace function well event that we created and then plug that into the return node and now if we also go and say to uh, preview for duration and we control shift s to save everything make sure that you do that you will see that now it will happen also for this tab as you can see that sphere there is from this tab so everything is working and now we just of course have to send the damage so uh, right now the damage is applied for the enemy which is set to damageable where our player also needs to be damageable so basically we have to now open again the third person character blueprint go into the class defaults search for a tag and then in the actor tag basically paste in damageable which i'm gonna go ahead and just copy and paste because i don't want to make any spell mistakes because it has to be exactly the same make sure it doesn't have any spaces or whatever and now it should do damage there we go it's doing damage to me you can see we may have to tune in a bit the uh, s s traces for the enemy, but okay, <laughs> and it killed me. That's so cool. Uh, but you get the idea. Um, yeah, that's basically it. Sounds and everything. Pretty cool. All right, so uh, that's it, guys. If you found this throw helpful, I would really appreciate you like the video and subscribe to my channel. I have lots of Unreal Engine fight throws, so go ahead and check them out. Join my Discord server so you can ask any questions about the RPG series or your progress or with games and stuff. And now, yes, with that said, bye bye.